Good morning and welcome to today's broadcast ministry by Perfecting Dunamis UK here in London, UK. God bless you for those who are joining us from near and far, from right across the world, wherever you are, please feel free to participate in our worship today. God bless you. Your life will be the better, the richer, the deeper, the stronger, the wiser, hallelujah, for tuning in to our broadcast today. There is a blessing just for you. There is a word just for you, tailor-made to the specificity of your need. God is going to meet you at the very point of your need today. God bless you. Hallelujah. We're in moments of consecration. We're in a time of consecration. We're in a month of consecration according to our plans. We don't know what the Lord will say, but we're in um, having times of fasting and seeking the face of the Lord. And I'm praising the Lord today for his goodness his faithfulness, and his grace. Hallelujah. We raise him, we lift him up, we adore him, we exalt him, we extol him, we esteem him, we bow before him, we worship him, we adore him. He's our God, he's our king, he's our master, he's our Lord, he's our creator. Hallelujah. He is deserving and worthy of our praise. Why don't you join me right now and praise him wherever you are, whoever you are with, why don't you join in and just acknowledge the Lord, the God of your salvation right now? Why don't you just join me in praising him? Why don't you just send those hearts up in celebration of how your heart is feeling towards the King of Kings this morning? Why don't you write your praise declarations in the comment box right now? Your, your notes of praise, your exclamation of praise. Why don't you go ahead and put that in the comment box right now and then share, share share, share. Hallelujah to God. Share and subscribe. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our prayer continues this week and on Tuesday evening we will be having with us Pastor Alison Johnson of Torchlight Ministries and she'll be joining us on Tuesday and we're anticipating a tremendous time in the presence of the Lord. Please don't miss it. We're now going to have praise and worship. Hallelujah. And this will be led by Sister Tricia Bailey. Let's sing this hymn together. Pass me not, O gentle Saviour. Hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. Help 
my own unbelief Savior Savior won't you hear my humble oh hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling me by Thou the spring of all my comfort more than life to me Who on earth have I beside I thee Who in heaven Bless you, hallelujah, for that beautiful hymn. Bless the name of the Lord. He's the spring of all my comfort. He's more than life to me. Hallelujah. I don't know. I have no one else on earth beside him. There's none in heaven but thee. Hallelujah. He's a wonderful God. He's a wonderful God. God bless you. Hallelujah. As we are in our month of consecration, our theme is I'll hasten to his throne. I'll hasten to his throne. Psalm 45 verse 6 says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Thy scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Genesis 41 and verse 41 says, Thou shalt be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne shall I be greater than thou. Hallelujah. We're dealing with our hasten to his throne. Perfected Dunamis, please continue to participate in the consecration. You are free, uh, feel free to uh, join uh, or to ask uh, any of your family or your friends to join. Feel free to pass on the link, the Zoom link, so that they can come in at the times appointed for prayer. If there is anyone that requires uh, me just to have a prayer with them, or just let me know. Just email prayer at perfectingdunamis.com and I shall be happy to meet with you in Zoom where we can counsel and have prayer together. That will be my absolute pleasure to do that. Uh, we, we want for everyone to feel the presence of the Lord and to draw closer to him, to hasten to his throne. There are so many things that we have to cast on the Lord and we want to hasten to his throne. So feel free uh, to uh, participate in our consecration, wherever you are, uh, even across the world, if you want to join with us, just email prayer at perfectingdunamis.com and we will be happy to give ministry to you. Bless the name of the Lord. We're now going to be blessed uh, by the unique ministry of what I consider to be one of UK's finest vocalists. 
And this is in the person of Sister Janine Dyer. Let us receive her at this time. Hello everyone and greetings to you all in the mighty name of Jesus. My name is Janine Dyer and I just want to say hi to you all. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so privileged and blessed to be able to share my ministry and song with you this morning. I want to greet dear Pastor Lamont and her lovely husband to for inviting me and for allowing me to share this platform and share my ministry with you. I pray you just enjoy your service and just be blessed by the rich word that's going to be brought to you today. I want you to be encouraged as I sing this song. It says, I love the Lord and he heard my cry. You know, we're going through some trying times at the moment, difficult times. But just be encouraged and know that he hears your cry. Every single moan, he's never too tired or too busy and he cares about you. Be blessed this morning. Yeah. 
yes, I'll hasten to his throne. Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful ministry. God bless you, Sister Janine. Hallelujah. Bless his high name. Let us turn to the word of God. Song of Solomon or the Song of Songs. Song of Solomon. Hallelujah. And we're in chapter 5. And I'll just be reading verse 16. That is the Song of Solomon, the Canticles or the Song of Songs. We're in the book of the Song of Solomon. And we are in the fifth chapter and we're reading verse 16. I'm reading from the King James Version. Please feel free to follow in whatever version you have. This is the word of the Lord. His mouth is sweet. His mouth is most sweet. Yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Let me read that again. His mouth is most sweet. Yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. So far, the text. God's blessing is added unto his word. The word of the Lord is blessed. Glory to God. This book in the Old Testament of the Bible is mostly overlooked. It's, it's not really taken seriously except for a few quotations that may be used at a, a wedding ceremony. Maybe it's not understood. Maybe it's deemed irrelevant. But even though the name of God is not mentioned, the fact that it made holy canon, holy writ, means that it met the criteria and it met the measurement for its involvement. And it means that it has purpose. There is a, a saying that I've come across by Confucius. It says, better a diamond with flaws than a pebble without. Better a diamond with flaws than a pebble without. And so my thought this morning, his mouth is most sweet, yea, he's altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. My assignment comes from that verse, and I'd like to speak for, uh, for the remaining of a few minutes, altogether lovely. Put your hands together for that word and seal it. We're talking about Jesus. He's all together lovely. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Go ahead, seal it. Ah, oh, there's some dif difficult situations that you may be dealing with. There are some ugliness that may be around you. There's some disappointments that you may have, but I want to remind you today. I want to inform you today. I want us to converse today. Hallelujah. I want us to have communion with each other today. I want us to be in agreement this morning that he is all together lovely. Ooh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Better a diamond with flaws than a pebble without. Yes, indeed, each diamond has some kind of flaw. Uh, it's called internal or external. In fact, very few people can afford flawless diamond. But it is the flaw that makes that diamond unique. But a pebble that has no flaws is just just a pebble, just like any other. We're in the book of the Song of Solomon. And uh, it, it, in fact, it is the Song of Songs, and it is also called the Canticles. And the scenario in this book um, of the Song of Songs is that there was one who owned a vineyard, and he asked an Ephraimite family to care for this vineyard. And this family consisted of a widow who had four children, two sons, two daughters. The younger daughter is described in chapter 8, verse 8. We have a little sister, and she hath no breast. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she shall be spoken for? This daughter, this young girl, had not yet matured, not yet developed, 
and they were thinking ahead for when she would be matured and a suitor or a, 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 a courtier or a young man would desire her. But the older sister was the, the Shulamite, who we will look at for a moment. She's referred to as Shulamite. The responsibility of the vineyard was everyone's, yet it was left to the Shulamite to tend to the vineyard. Chapter 1, verse 6, she says, My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. In other words, she was so busy taking care of someone else's vineyard that she did not have time to take care of herself. She didn't own a vineyard. She didn't have time to take care of herself. She would spend hours in the cruel heat. In verse 5, she says of chapter 1, I am black but comely. Oh, you daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Today, many pride themselves with having a suntan. But in those days, to have a sun-scorched skin was most unfavorable. And this young woman says, I'm taking care of a vineyard that's not mine. I'm getting burned in the process. And I have no time to take care of my own needs, my own vineyard, my own appearance. I am black by the heat of the sun. I am black for being left to toil in the heat. I am black because of being hated and left on the outside. Black, not by choice or by design. Black but comely. I identify with the tents of Kedar. Now, Kedar means dark-skinned. Kedar is a kind of ebony uh, way that we would say today. The tents were made and covered over with black hair-like covering. Dense curtains was also used to cover the tent of Solomon and to dwell in the tents of Kedar, she was actually saying, I am cut off from the worship of the true and living God. And this girl, this Shulamite, was isolated, left working slavishly in the heat. The owner of the vineyard expressed, however, to Shulamite, that I don't see you as ugly. I see your beauty. And I'm leaving you now. But when I return, I will make you my bride. Hang with me for a while. I'm talking about altogether lovely. She inquired about where he was going to feed his flock. But he reassured her that all will be well. That uh, uh, just continue to take care of the flock. Just continue to toil in the vineyard. She was mocked. She was ridiculed that this man had stood her up, that this man was just messing around with her, that this man would not return for her. She would dream and she would cry out, my beloved, my beloved, but he would not be there. By night, she said, I sought for him, he who my soul loves. I go through the city and I'm looking. Have you seen the one who my soul loves? Um, but they would say, no, we have not seen him. And though she search for him in the city. She could not find him. Ah, oh, She saw the watchman and she asked him, if, if you've seen the one that I am looking for. And even the watchman said, no, I do not know where he is. I cannot find him. I did not see him. But one day, I hope you're relating to this, she received a message that the king had need of her. She was amazed that after all that time of working in the vineyard, he had finally come back for her. So the process of preparation with oils and, and, and beautiful perfumes and, and bundles of myrrh and spikenard so that she was getting herself ready to enter into the king's chamber. Now in that chamber was a throne room where the king was. And she responded, Be behold, my beloved, and his desire is towards me. After all the time of waiting, I now come into his throne room. He has called for me and now my beloved and his desire 
is towards me. And he says to her, thou art fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. Mm, yes, 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 yes. And she responds, his mouth is most sweet. Yea, he is all together lovely. Oh, why don't you go ahead and praise the name of the Lord. We can see a relationship here between Christ and his church. I don't have the time to deal with that. What a beautiful story of Christ and his church. Uh, but I want to dwell on the thought that he is altogether lovely. This inexpressible admiration, altogether lovely. No flaws. Mm, no flaws. Better a diamond with flaws than a pebble without. But he's all together lovely. No flaws. No defects. No deficiencies. No mood swings. No partiality. No forgetfulness. No tardiness. No tiredness. No cognitive impairment. No hypertension. No pimples. No uneven skin tone. He is all together lovely. He has no flaws. He is all together lovely. Somebody go ahead and help me praise him because my beloved, oh, his mouth is sweet. He speaks words of comfort to me. He gives me words that will lift me up out of the dunghill of my situation. My beloved's mouth is sweet. Yea, he is altogether lovely. Help me praise him, somebody. Glory be to God. One of the most beautiful birds that we can enjoy and that we have in nature is the peacock. The peacock has great foresight. And when she spreads her feathers and surrounds herself with the intricacies of her wings and her feathers, it's amazing. Pliny the Elder, in his book, Natural History, book 10, uh, page 22 and 23 says, When praised, the peacock spreads its feathers to face the sun, so they would shine more brilliantly in the dark. Augustine says in the City of God, in book 21, chapter 4, says, For who but God, the creator of all things, has given to the flesh of the peacock its antiseptic property? It's a door in etymology says, The peacock flesh is so hard that it barely decays and is difficult to cook. Mm. It is said that the peacock's flesh. It, it's no point you boiling it and cooking it because it's just not going to cook. It is also said that the peacock's flesh, doesn't matter how long you leave it out, it doesn't decay. It doesn't become putrid. Peacock is beautiful. Peacock is lovely to look at. Yet, the peacock's head looks like a snake. Her, her flesh is tough and can hardly be cooked or digested. The peacock's voice is like a fiend. Most people are scared when the peacock begins to bellow. The peacock's pace is that of a thief. And the peacock is only flightless. Because as beautiful as the peacock is seemingly is, as beautiful as the peacock seemingly is, and the peacock is beautiful in her splendiferous array. She is beautiful, but she does not want to fly high. You know why? Because she does not want her feet to be seen. Oh, I, I don't blame her. I've seen a picture of the peacock's feet, and her feet are U-G-L-Y ugly. 72 Roman times font bold underline ugly. Oh, but lovely, but not altogether lovely. Beautiful, but flawed. Oh my goodness. Now you go to 1 Samuel eleven thirteen. Saul was the first king of Israel, chosen by God. He wasn't self-promoting. He hid among the baggage. He, he, he was popular because he was valiant. He was head and shoulders above everyone else. He was very tall. He was very handsome. He's described as a man of valor, apparently known as modest and generous. 
He was victorious in battles against the Philistines, the Amorites, the Moabites, and of course the Amalekites. And under his reign, the tribes of Israel enjoyed a closer unity. Saul reigned for 42 years, yet Saul suffered from, from not being a principled man. He tended to ignore what God said so that the people would be pleased. As great as Saul was in his appearance, he was flawed in that he was a people pleaser. He succumbed to situational ethics. Poor Saul also suffered from depression. And his depression would cause him to lash out at David because of jealousy. David has slain his 10,000 and Saul his thousand. The Bible says from that day on, Saul eyed up David. Saul experienced and suffered from fits and rage of anger and jealousy. Saul felt so isolated and depressed that he consulted a witch, the witch of Endor, who he called up to recall the spirit of Samuel. Saul, seemingly grand, high position, kingly throne, yet flawed. He died by his own hand and had to have his dead body rescued from the Philistines so that he could be given a semblance of an honorable burial. Lovely, but not all together. Seemed to have it all, but not all together. Had a lovely lifestyle, but it wasn't all together lovely. But Jesus, our Savior, is all together lovely. Glory be to God. Naaman was captain of Syria. He was known for his humility, known for his compassion, known for his wealth and undefeated fame. Naaman had status. Naaman had a throne. Naaman had rulership. Naaman was a victor. Naaman had success. Naaman's name meant pleasantness. Yet he had the most un pleasant of conditions. Naaman was a leper. Naaman had leprosy. Naaman had status, but Naaman had a good lifestyle. Lovely, but not altogether lovely. Rachel, beautiful, had the love and favor of her husband, who loved her so much that even though he had to work seven extra years for her, he said in Genesis 29, 20, to him, it was just a few days because of the love that he had for her. Rachel, one of the most important matriarchs from the Old Testament. Rachel was gorgeous. Rachel was beautiful. Rachel had a fair countenance. And apparently, according to pictures, even though there were no cameras, but according to pictures that I've seen of who is supposed to be Rachel, Rachel was lovely, but not all together. Because as beautiful as Rachel was, Rachel was barren. Rachel was bitter. And Rachel had a problem with stealing household idols. Rachel was cunning. And Rachel was deliberate. She told her dad, I cannot stand up in your presence. When he was looking for the heirlooms, when he was looking for the household idols that were stolen, Rachel sat down in the wagon and she said, Daddy, I cannot stand in reverence of you because it's that time of the month for me. Rachel had the marriage. Rachel had the best tent, but flawed with jealousy and envy. Rachel was lovely, but not all together. You and I may have the job, and we may have the status, and we may have the car, and we may have the home, and we may have the profession, and we may have the looks, and we may have the voice, and we may have the degree, and we may have what we need and what we have worked for, oh, and we may be lovely, but not all together. Someone may think that you are perfect, but you're not all together. Someone may think that you've got it all together, but you're not all together. Jesus is the only one that is all together lovely. Why don't you write that in the chat box right now? Jesus, bless his high name. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Praise him. Isaiah, even though he lived 700 years before Christ, said of him, 
a child will be born and a son will be given. His name will be wonderful. His name will be counselor. His name will be mighty God. His name will be everlasting father. His name will be prince of peace. Yet this Jesus had no form, no comeliness, no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and he was rejected. We esteemed him not and we hid our face as it were from him. Not because there was flaw in him. Oh, we want the ones who are beautiful but have flaws. But the one who is beautiful altogether with no flaws was despised and was rejected. And we esteemed him not. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Not because there was flaw in him. Oh, no. He had and did no sin. Neither was guile found in his mouth. In fact, he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. He even at his trial, which was a miscarriage of justice, he even his trial was a sham. It was illegal. It was nothing more than a kangaroo court. He asks in John 8, 46, which of you can convict me of sin? And in the end, Pilate's verdict was, I find no fault in him him. Oh, glory. God the Father himself declared from heaven, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That's why it is his throne that will abide forever and ever. And that's the throne that we must hasten to. No, there is no beauty that we should desire him. No form, no comeliness. He was rejected and despised, not because he was unattractive. That's not what it means. Not because he had flaws, so we have no desire for him, but because Jesus, the Holy One, the Glorious One, the Perfect One, the Immutable One, the Irrefragable One, the Omnipresent One, the Omniscient One, the Omnipotent One. Oh, Jesus, uh, the Son of the Living God, full of grace and truth. Oh, that's not why mm, he was despised. That's not why there is no beauty that we should desire him. There's no form, no comeliness. That's not what it means. But rather, mm -hmm, he is unattractive to the to the worldly mind. He's unattractive to the worldly minded. He's unattractive, oh, to materialism, to those who are filled with materialism and sensualism, uh, the lust of the flesh, uh, the lust of the eyes, uh, and the pride of life. Uh, when looking at Jesus uh, and, and what will have to happen in your life uh, through the lens of the lust of the flesh uh, and the pride of life, uh, then there is no beauty. There's no beauty that we should desire him. There's no appeal to the lust of the flesh without conviction of sin. We cannot see him in his beauty. Let us bring our imperfect beauty, our flawed loveliness to the altogether lovely. Give him our flawed joy for his joy, which is full and complete. Give him our wavering peace for his peace that passeth all understanding. Give him our selected mercy for his mercy that endures forever. Jesus Christ is is altogether lovely. And because he's altogether lovely, he is called a son of righteousness. He's called a star. He's called the bread of life. He's called the captain of the Lord's host. He's called the day spring. He's called the good shepherd. He's called the prince of life. He's called the son of God and the son of man. He's called Christ the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. He is altogether lovely. I bless the name of the Lord this morning because he is altogether lovely. If you don't know him and you don't serve him as your Savior and Lord, please pray this prayer. Jesus, I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that you are the Son of God. Whew. I believe that you died, was buried, and rose again on the third day. I accept you now as my Savior in Jesus' name. If you have prayed this prayer, please email prayer at perfectingdunamis.com and we will be honored to assist you in your new found life. God bless you and remember that he's altogether lovely.
Now please pay attention to the screen for instructions on how to make your donations. Please be generous in our giving. For when he gave, he gave his all. For God so loved that he gave his only begotten son. Blessings to you and yours on this day. This day that is a new day. And some good things may happen. And some not so good things will ha will, may happen. But remember that Jesus the Christ, he is all together lovely. God bless you. Thank you for joining us in our worship and giving today. Donations can be made online via our website at Perfecting Dunamis. Com. Allow me to show you. Once on our website, go to the Giving tab at the top and click on the Donate button. Once you've clicked on the Donate button, type in the amount you would like to donate right here. You can either donate by your PayPal account if you have one, or you can donate using a credit or debit card as shown here. After selecting payment via debit or credit card, please complete your details as shown on screen. Then select Donate Now. Other ways to donate include by Cash App. Please note we can only accept Cash App donations from UK residents. Alternatively, donations can be made via direct transfer using the account and sort details shown on screen. Thank you for your generosity and may God richly bless you.